What radio, the music you want. With your host, Steve Dan. Don't uh, <laughs> ever, ever, ever call me stupid. Okay. Radio what? Dot com. What's up, party people? It's Keys Dan with RadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com, coming to you live in a living color from the Radio What Studios. And this is my podcast, What Makes You Famous. It's an extension of the RadioWhat.com internet radio station that I've been running for quite some time. And if you need DJ services, where do you go? DJLittleRock.com. Check availability and get a free price quote. And maybe you can have me, yes, me, at your next event. Let me entertain you. I'll try not to do that at your next event. I really won't. I I won't sing. Okay. Maybe I'll do a little karaoke show for you. If that is your desire. Today on the program, so excited. A creator, an entertainer, a musician, an actor, a model. It's Angela Gale. I'm so excited to talk to her. And you get to listen to a little bit of her story in the next few minutes. Yes. Uh, This week's shows, well, (laughs) I did have the Friday night gig at the RAB in Conway, Arkansas, my usual Friday night gig. But uh, unfortunately, that was canceled. Uh, They've closed due to the COVID-19, the novel COVID-19 coronavirus going around. People, come on. It's a bad flu. They're going to fix it. Go out. Enjoy your life. Live your life. You know how to to get rid of viruses? You go out in the sun. You go outside. Go play. Go roll around in the dirt. (laughs) Uh, That's uh, my medical advice, and I'm not a doctor. (laughs) On Saturday, I do have a wedding, so I'm kind of excited about that. I'll be in North Little Rock. North Little Rock, Arkansas, for a wedding. Yes, I love weddings. I get to be with people at their best times and party with the people. And this wedding is a, I think there's, it's Spanish and English. So I get to practice my Espanol. Necesito practicar mi Espanol. Gozando la buena música con los gentes. Ah, yes. (laughs) And if you don't know what I said, uh, you know, learn Spanish. (laughs) All right, all right, all right. I've talked your ear off long enough. Let's get into it with Angela Gale. Calling Angela Gale now. Hello. Angela Gale, please. This is her. Angela Gale, as I live and Hi. breathe. Keys Dan with the What <laughs> Makes You Famous podcast. How are you? Hi, how are you? Good. How are you? Oh, I'm super fantastic. So excited to talk to you. The famous. Thank eh. I, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Though. We're going to hear your story today on the What Makes You Famous podcast. Give the people a little idea of who an Angela Gale is. Well, an Angela Gale or this Angela Gale? Yes, that one in particular. <laughs> the one I'm speaking to at this particular time uh, in space. Okay, uh, well, who am I? I guess I'm, um, I'm a musician, I'm an actress, a model. Um, I come from uh, Tennessee, so I'm kind of a Southern girl. I'm a tomboy. Um, what else? Could, what else? I don't. That's about it. Mm-hmm. Well, you went in that order: <laughs> musician, yeah. actress, model. Is that the slash? Is that the way it is? Um, it sometimes changes around. It, like right now, for example, is uh, there's a lot more acting stuff going on. Uh, there's some stuff coming up in the next month that's going to be modeling. So it sort of switches around. But I am. Uh, recording an album right now so i usually say musician first because i spend a lot of time writing music and playing and all of that so tell us everything so what came first the musician the actor or the model uh what came first so so i started playing uh, piano uh, and taking voice lessons when i was four so i guess that came first four years old who got you into that uh my mother she 
my mother and my grandmother and probably her mom as well played piano. Uh, so they got me into it pretty early. Mm-hmm. And uh, my dad plays several instruments, so it was important uh, for that to happen. And then I started acting, I guess, taking classes and things when I was in first grade. How old are you in first grade? Seven? <laughs> Seven or so. But Seven. Angela Gale, yeah. let me stop you there. It's in the blood. Okay. Your parents, they're very talented, as you may have uh, alluded to. Uh, mom, right. uh, what did she, what did you learn from your mother? She plays what? She played the organ. The, she still does, but she she plays the piano uh, and she sings. Okay. And then my my dad plays the trumpet, uh, the guitar, the banjo. Yeah, I think he plays that stuff. So, <laughs> <laughs> and so then I learned, did they use that as a as part of their career, or was that a hobby for them? Uh, it was a little bit of both. They uh, toured around for a little while together. Uh, they did, yeah, together. Oh, uh, then, if you know any of that love story, I want to hear it. How did your mom and dad get together? Do you know anything about that? <laughs> um, they how did they get together? That was, that's a long story. Uh, I got time. I guess they. <laughs> They randomly met at a job that they were doing, and uh, they were friends for several years before they got married. And then I, I don't know what else to say about no, that. No, no, but, but always lived in, in Nashville or in the uh, in the Tennessee area? You're in. Wh- wh- where are you exactly? I'm in Nashville. Nashville. In, uh, okay. It, Is that yeah. where you were born and raised around that area? It is, yes. And, and what's Hendersonville? Is that a t- little teeny tiny town outside of Nashville? Um, so Nashville's not very big. People think it is. Feels uh, like it is. Um, it, it's not. You can uh, well. It, there's a lot of traffic now, but without traffic, you could. We used to be able to drive around all the way downtown and around it and back in about twelve minutes. <laughs> um, so it's not. It's not big, and then you have the outlying country areas, which today they're not, uh, they're more suburban, I guess they've grown a lot, but growing up Hendersonville was a small country town. Uh, and when I, I left for a while to do modeling and some other things. And, um, as I've, I have a home now that's back in the country area. I'll say that, but it's uh, not in Hendersonville. <laughs> okay. Okay. So yeah. do you consider yourself a, country girl at heart if you want to paint yourself in that small box at, at yes i am i am a country girl i i grew up um chopping wood and climbing trees and uh you know hunting and doing all that kind of stuff uh, for food of course uh so yeah I, I i come from the country yes i encourage kids to play outside do it <laughs> i eat a lot of dirt yeah. i think i'm immune to everything <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we didn't have uh, cable and all or TV growing up, so we we had to do stuff outside. And if we were inside, I was always playing the piano because uh, that's really all there was to do. So, well, did you have yeah. a, a full piano, or was it a keyboard of some kind? No, I had a full piano and a keyboard because uh, I got put into a jazz band when I was before I was ten. Wow. And I was uh, traveling uh, with a with an adult. I don't know how this would happen now, but basically, an adult jazz band um, around the country. Uh, Wait, not your parents? Paid. No, no, my parents. <laughs> I had a I had a handler, I guess. Okay, uh, not related to and, you at all. Uh, no, no. How about uh, that? How that, did that come to be? Co- uh, I just. I, I played all, so much and I got hired on with this jazz band and I was doing some other things as well and I was getting paid. So they hired basically an assistant, I guess, to go around with me. And it was a short tour, uh-huh. uh, enough for me to come back and go to school and all. But, but yeah, I was, I did that. That started when I was 10. So that sounds pretty cool. Yeah. At 10 years old, you're a touring musician you already had some skills enough skills to pay the bills as it were yeah <laughs> <laughs> so who i mean how how long did you uh did you uh practice before you 
you they had the idea, hey, let's put Angela Gale. Were you the front? Are you were you a backup singer? What were you doing with this band? Um, I was playing the piano, but I would have solos and stuff like that. Uh, you know, when I started, mm-hmm. uh, and when I first sort of uh, the way that the vocal started was my piano teacher who also taught some other things was uh, doing a vocal lesson with a girl that was older and he was trying to teach her how to sing how to sing from her su- stomach or something and so I came in and just built it out this note that he was trying to get her to do and um, it sort of blew up from there and I was playing I was practicing he had me rehearsing three or four times a week with him um, in addition to practicing on my own so I just, I would go to school and play. They had a little stage. I would play on the stage uh, during recess and all that. And I, just, I don't really remember exactly how I got discovered. I might have been playing at a wedding <laughs> or at a nursing home or something. And somebody found me. So, Yeah, I, th- yeah. I think I just saw a meme on one of these music pages that, that I follow. And uh, it's, uh, don't, wait, uh, don't expect to be, in front of this and it's a band in front of you know maybe thousands of people until you've played a hundred of these where you're in front of two people so you're you're leading me to believe that you've done a lot of small gigs in front of nursing homes and i love those nursing home gigs i do because I, I i do some karaoke shows uh with the uh with the, the local uh alf als assisted living facility alf yeah and uh they yeah. they are so appreciative so was that the first gigs that you were playing was was some smaller stuff or were some weddings and parties like that? Um, I don't remember what the first gig I had was. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm sure it was probably a recital uh, of some sort uh, with the, you know, where I was learning piano at. Um, but uh, yeah, that, this is all before that, you're a teenager. This is great, a great experience. I mean, how how did you feel when you? Uh, did you go to a public school or, or did you go to a, a private school or t- were you tutored at home? I did a little bit of both. Oh, so you did, um, you got homeschooled a little bit? A little bit. And I, I did, I was at private school for a little while and then, um, then I went to public school. I ended up, yeah. So I, I think, um, I went Taylor. I went to the same school as Taylor Swift. What? So yeah so she yeah, was she exactly. a couple of years ahead of you no she is a couple of years behind me oh okay so so she went yeah. to the same school that you did angela gale okay let's she just did, yeah. let's just put it in the proper perspective you know she's following in your footsteps no i, don't want to say, I, I would never <laughs> no let's not say that <laughs> <laughs> no you don't have to say it i said it i said it oh, no, okay. I, i'm a fan of tay tay <laughs> i you know i love it she walked her path and i walked my path okay so. <laughs> okay but i mean yeah. you know you ended up at the same school i mean if you're in in a uh, uh, nashville you say it's a smaller town i mean i i feel like it's so big being a music city being a a city of creativity and not just country music, all kinds of music. You know, what, what mm-hmm. genre do you put yourself in? And when did you start? Uh, well, I mean, you say you, you played piano uh, from a very early age. When did you feel like you were, you were good enough and, and that you, I mean, that first recital or those first few recitals, maybe you don't know exactly which one the first one was, but when you got up in front of those people, how did it make you feel? Uh, m- you know, maybe a, a class recital or, or a, a wedding or a party of some kind? Or how did it make you feel? Um, well, I, the first time that it sort of hit me, um, I had a, I was with a jazz band and we were in front of, gosh, at least a thousand people, I was, I think. And uh, I had to, part of my solo, and I was, I was a little kid anyways, but during the solo, I was supposed to stand up and sort of kick the, the stool back <laughs> and and like really be into the song and I remember standing up and kicking the stool back and what I was playing was simple for me but everybody was cheering and I kind of it, it hit I, I remember that moment for some reason because it sort of hit me like I don't understand this is not that big of a deal but it kind of is because that why is everybody I mean I'm not really doing anything you know, so, oh, I am um, totally impressed. I, I mean, my whole life I played records, uh, you know, now I, 
I, I, I run the, the digital wheels of steel. I cannot play the three guitars that I have in this house, the piano that I have in this house, the, the harmonica. I am so in awe of musicians that can move their fingers and music comes out, you know, moving on an instrument uh, of some kind. And you're, you're playing yeah. piano. This is one of the, the, the most amazing instruments. If you can do it right, you, you, can, you can change people's lives. And it sounds like you did, you've done that in a, a, a certain kind of way because you've had some response to people when you're playing these recitals. I mean, when people come up to you, what do they say? Um, there's a lot of pat on the back and I can't believe it. How do you, how did you get, how did you get here? Like, how did, how did this happen? Kind of thing. It was a more of a surprise to people that somebody so young was, um, running around in this jazz band. Is it a surprise to you, them. Angela Gale? Is it a surprise to me now? No, even or, back then, uh, when at the tender no, age of was, 10 or, or, or 11 or, <laughs> or, or whatever that was, you know, seven somewhere in there. Whatever. Seven or whatever. Oh, my goodness, um, even earlier. Um, no, it wasn't a surprise because I, my piano teacher was pretty strict on me. So there was a lot of times that in in practice i would have to sit for hours sometimes just to get one song uh and he taught me how to memorize as well and how to harmonize and all of that kind of stuff and i was i started singing as well so you have that education if if that's what you want to call it well that's even yeah too. that's even more impressive angela gale that you could play and sing at the same time is that what you do I do, yes, I I do. Um, I'm play I play the guitar now. Um, uh, what? Yeah, yeah. So I started playing the guitar, and I write my own songs, which is uh, good. Yeah, I think that's good. when did that happen? <laughs> um. Well, we have to. We'd have to go back. So, um, I started recording. Uh, I started doing like Mariah Carey covers and stuff when I about 13 I guess 13 or 14 well let's start to get a timeline uh, on this what year would that have been what um she was doing um you know the she sang my my all well I'm thinking late uh, 90s maybe or early 2000s if if, if I got yeah, the timeline around that, right around that yeah maybe late 90s late 90s uh, okay. so so I would go into the studio and record a cover. And back then you had to go, they have um, showcases, I guess, where you go and a bunch of record executives and stuff would be in the room and you'd sing for them. And uh, So I would go and sing and, uh, you know, a few years later it kind of changed to, to the, like, if you, I don't want to, keep bringing her up but like taylor she was going to cafes and stuff and playing gigs and i was at showcases and and we'd run into each other um auditioning and things like that for different things but um that's cool that's where you start i mean the showcases i've I've heard of those before usually they're set up by music teachers or or people that you know something like that is is that what it was it was set up by somebody that that was teaching you or or somebody that was helping you guys no it was no, it was just, um, we have a lot of record labels down here, uh, downtown, uh, in Nashville. I say down here, like everybody knows what I'm talking about. Oh, but, everybody um, knows you- Nashville, Tennessee. Everybody knows. <laughs> if they don't, what rock would have they been under? Uh, look it up geographically. Look it up on your Wikipedias and, uh, and find out a little bit more about Nashville, Tennessee. If you don't know, it is a music city. <laughs> you know, people go for it miles is. around. If they want to get into the music biz, I've talked to so many people on this podcast that have moved, you know, and lifted their whole families and and begged their families to to move them to Tennessee so they can get their careers off the ground from Ohio, from Florida, from all points, you know, even all over the world to get to Nashville, Tennessee. And I see that's what makes me think it's a big town. And you say it's 18 minutes across. <laughs> it's it's not it's less than that, it, it, but it's. It's it's overpopulated and it's, there's a lot of traffic here. People will tell you. Well, I um, lived in Orlando, I Florida. I lived in Orlando, Florida, for about eight months, and that was a uh, twenty pounds of uh, uh, of whatever in a ten pound bag. 
<laughs> so yeah. Oh, uh, I know. I went to school there, so oh. I know. I know how that was. What? Yeah. Okay. Well, I get. Take us through your school life. Okay. You you you've kind of alluded to to uh, your music life. Uh, how were you in school? How did the kids treat you in school? You say you had private lessons. You you did the private school. You've been homeschooled. Uh, take us through the timeline on on that one. Uh, give the people an idea of of how you. Became. It's hard to start from age four, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, from um, age four. And, and what year was that? So, I mean, I'm trying to get a little timeline here. Um, it was in the late eighties. Late eighties, so, okay. Yeah, so um, I guess I was in middle school, six about sixth grade, and I started. I played the flute yeah. and the what else and percussion i started playing percussion instruments drums and things like that uh and then in by the time i got to ninth grade i got scouted for modeling what um yeah someone uh i was at a concert and i had gotten backstage passes and this person in the band I mean, and i'm not going to mention which band it was but why he, not uh, name drop we're, that's what we're here for no, give no, shout no outs to the people <laughs> <laughs> i i, I want to know if that jazz band is still together and you can name drop them no no i don't want to oh I yeah I, I like to give credit where credit is due they helped to shape angela gale into the person she is today and, and so okay so yeah, you were at a concert mm -hmm. um so the one of the bandmates he's a because it was a i guess it was a boy band um <laughs> that's all i'm getting giving you for that <laughs> come on um, come he, on he kid <laughs> he, he approached me and said you're a beautiful girl and um he got me in touch with some uh, agents in new york and i started modeling uh for a while i did that through high school but i also i was playing sports and i was in the band i was in the chorus uh, the chorus was traveling around. Um, they they were award winning, uh, so I was doing competitions and things like that. And then I would go and um, I was I sang the national anthem for a season for the with the Titans. <laughs> You're doing uh, a lot, Angela Gale. Starting. <laughs> I was busy. Now that I'm talking about it, yeah. I, was, I was kind of busy. <laughs> I'm telling you, everybody has a story, and you have a story. Uh, you you have yeah. many many different threads. Uh, tell me about the modeling career. You go to New York. How did that go? I mean, people think that that modeling is easy. All you do is sit there in front of a camera, uh, you know, and and okay, uh, move this way and look that way. I, you know, from I, I've done uh, you know some photo shoots with models down in the Florida Keys, and it is hard work. Man. <laughs> Sometimes I got to climb rocks and and bend in different ways just to get that right angle. I mean, tell me about your oh, modeling it career. Is. Um, I did some runway shows and some fashion weeks and all that. I, I toured around and did fashion week um, a few times uh, in New York and California, Florida. Uh, and then I guess I got, I don't know how to say it appropriately, I guess. I got old enough and I needed to move out of the runway uh, okay. side of it because I, I didn't want to be there's a lot of pressure to be, uh, to look a certain way and all of that in a uh, runway. So, yeah, uh, you know, I've, I've heard that this is in the, the late eighties, maybe early nineties that you're doing this. Well, this is getting into it. We're getting into the far into the nineties now, probably. Yeah. And at that time they were still wanting the, the models to, for, for the most part to be rail thin. I, I think the, the, the body image has, has uh, grown since then, uh, so to speak, but, is that what they were wanting to, you to be rail thin? They did. They, uh, there was, yeah, they did. And I was thin, but, uh, um, I was for, for compared to, to other models, I was the biggest one. I was the fat girl <laughs> and I couldn't, I didn't want to do that anymore. And I was, I was still small, but I was not as small as everybody else. Yeah. I've seen, were, I've seen some of the, the, the stylists, the, the creators and they would go to the, this model that that is skinny as can be and say lose 20 pounds and you know come back don't come back until you do you know just the the typical in the movies <laughs> did you ever did. have that situation 
I did. I had that situation several times, and it it's something, you know, I was doing acting as well. So mm-hmm. I was doing commercials and uh, different things like the video, music videos and stuff. And um, they, I would go there, and they would say, "Well, you can't be a lead role because you uh, you look too pretty. You look too like a <laughs> model, you know." So I got kind of caught like. And I, I don't, I'm not complaining about it. I'm just saying it. Yeah. It, you have to <laughs> it's starting to sound like Zoolander. You know, it's so in, it hard being incredibly, you know, very ridiculously no, good no, looking. No, no, I don't say it like that. But, <laughs> no, you're not saying it. Um, I'm saying it. Remember that, people. Yeah. I'm saying it. But Angela Gale, yes, yeah. you are a pretty girl. And and that that was a downfall in certain things. Uh, yes, we don't want... For, the, the supermodel to be hawking our our equipment on TV. I mean, what what kind of uh, how did you get into the commercials? Um, one of my agencies put me sent me on a some photo shoot like com- some print work and things like that, and I, I just I started I was I, I did plays and I went to acting school and so I learned how to improv and do all that kind of stuff um, when I was younger. So I just. I liked I liked the idea of not being myself. I guess just kind of I, I was shy, and the only time I would really come out um, and be outgoing is when I was performing. I have and heard I realized that, that so much. Yeah, because I'm really shy actually in in real life, <laughs> and I'm really reserved and all that. So, um, anyways, I just I wanted to play characters, and I wanted to. Um, I wanted to be something more than that, just the girl, the pretty girl that stands on the sidelines, you know, right, I, wanted, right. I wanted to do more. So, so were you doing mostly to, print work after you did the runway modeling? Uh, I guess you were doing that as a, as a teenager in, in New York and I was and doing, Florida. yeah, yeah. Um, I, the print, yeah. So the print work went from, it went from runway and all that kind of stuff to sort of like swimwear Okay, and a little more where someone with a little more curvy uh, fits in really well. Okay. <laughs> so I did that. And, and what was your um, comfort level there? Did they make you feel at home comfortable or was there a little bit of a struggle there as well? I didn't get as much pressure to change as I did in, uh, on the other side of it. Uh, you, you definitely have to be careful being a young a teenager and you have to be really careful who you uh, surround yourself with i guess and were you but, surrounding yourself um, with the right people i mean you know with this yeah in this era of me too i mean back then it was before me too so uh, you know i was hoping that you know you can give people an idea of how to steer away from pitfalls uh yeah it's it's kind of it, it's a lot about instinct and when you when you get a bad feeling that that something that is just doesn't feel right then Something probably is off, and you. It's best to just exit the situation. It's not worth your life or uh, getting into a situation that's going to scar you for for years. You know, just exit. Um, so and honestly, you, as, as yeah. go ahead. Huh? No, good. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, like, as people, we need to realize that we're worth we're worth more than a picture. We're worth more than than that to to put ourselves through that for a career you know for a job not worth it oh i agree now yeah. when when you were going to all these you know runways and prints and all these different functions did you have the handler with you did you have somebody uh representing you or, or that could take care of you if a situation went awry um i did there were people that the agency would send to make sure we were okay and if i was in nashville then my parents uh would come with me uh and then, of course, I turned 18 and I was able to do things on my own. So I traveled a lot during that time. So amazing. The, the magic of, number 18. I mean, that doesn't mean that you're fully grown, <laughs> but, but it does mean yeah, that you're an adult you, and you can do things. <laughs> that's true. I, I I guess it depends. It's subjective, right? So if, if I started when I was four, um, it might be different than someone that just started six months ago. Right, but I would you still know. expect a young lady, you know, such as yourself, would would still have somebody. It's, it's good to travel in pairs, at least. And 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 is that something you were still doing at eighteen, or did you feel like, eh, I could do this, I got this? 
Um, yeah, uh, yeah, I had um, one of my best friends. She was a makeup artist, and we were about the same age. She was modeling and stuff too. So uh, we kind of buddied up, I guess, and traveled around together, uh, which was really good. So you know, we could if something if something bad happened, we could protect each other, uh, and we did, and we're still very close friends. Sweet. So, yeah. It's good to have so, a long-lasting guess, relationship. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, so then I uh, traveled the world for several years. Yeah, tell me the um, places that you've been. And, and was this all modeling or, or acting? And what, what what took you where? Uh, you know, give and give the people a little timeline of, of how this, uh, you know, what, what, when was this? What grade were you in and how were you getting your studies done as well? Well, I got through high school. Um, uh, I that was in the two thousand, the early two thousands. What year did you graduate? In the, two, I don't want to tell you that. Oh Not my goodness! Exactly. I'm fifty one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, before oh, I was well, fifty, yeah, before I was fifty, I, I used to be really shy about telling people my age. But then when I turned fifty, I went, "I'm fifty. I can kick." And stretch and kick. I'm 50. <laughs> but okay, I, well, maybe when I'm 50, I'll let you know. <laughs> but I know as, as an actress, as a model, you know, the, the, the pressure, uh, once again, is on is shelf life. You feel like, oh, my goodness, I'm in my 20s now. I better get make it all happen. You know, things, you know, things may go south. Uh, I know there's a lot of pressure uh, on, on a young lady, especially because for, for some reason, well, I mean, men. Uh, when they get into the movies, it, it seems like they, they age and they distinguish, but women have had that problem. This is like age old that as soon as they start to get a certain age, you're playing the mom, mom, I'm playing the mom. Wait, I was just playing the daughter, you know? So, but yeah, uh, it, there's, there would be photo shoots. I would go on and, um, uh, I was, you know, 20, 21 and I was, after a while I'd ask the other girls like how old are you and they'd say they they said they were 21 but they're actually like 35 or 36 oh my and you know we just it's just one of those things it, I don't you know if a it doesn't matter what you look like but if they look on there and see a certain age then they're automatically out as far as casting and all of that so you kind of have to lie about it sometimes isn't that amazing? Uh, it's so, I mean, yeah. and you figure as people become more uh, woke and this, and that's probably the first time I've said that word on this podcast and we're about 160 mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah uh, episodes in. And, and I've, uh, you know, as we become more, uh, well, I'll say it again, woke, uh, you know, people need uh-huh. to, to realize that, that all people have worth at, at whatever age. And, and I mean, I'm, uh, you know, you you started at a young age, so you have so much life experience already in music and acting, and and we haven't even really touched on where, you know where your acting started and how, you know what training you had and what kind of plays you did. But you have such worth, and the older you get, the more experience you have, you, you become you know more valuable as time progresses. People need to realize that. Ah. Oh. Oh, yeah, I, I agree with you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I agree with you for sure. Um, so where I don't know, where are yeah, we? Yeah, I get okay, it. Yeah, so, <laughs> I know. I'm I'm so putting would, putting us on a on a different path and thinking about things with you, and, and I'm learning from you, Angela Gale. I am, and we're oh, all learning you. from you. You know, yes, you know, learning how you. how the you know things could go right, but you had a friend that was with you and still with you and helping you through things. So where where in the world did Angela Gale go when she left Nashville, Tennessee and went off? What was the the first place you went and you know and why was was it? I, I know you said something about New York and uh Florida, I'm guessing Miami or Orlando, but uh what was the yeah. first place that you went and why? Well, actually I wanted to ch- one of my dream I had reached some some of my other dreams that I had set for myself as a kid. Uh, and I, one of the things I wanted to do was I wanted to travel. So, uh, I went and worked for a cruise line cool. for several years. Yeah. So we traveled, I, I mean, uh, so many different countries that I visited. Um, I, I couldn't even name them all. I don't well, think. Name the, name the ones that stick out in your head and the ones and, and the experiences that you had there. 
And in the uh, uh, in the cruising, what what work did you do? Um, I I did a little bit of uh, stage to stuff on stage, but I did I was more of like in the as an officer, uh, someone who. I was, I worked as a captain's assistant, so I was doing a lot of strange work that people do as a Tell me assistant. everything. <laughs> Tell me everything. Did you swab decks? Because, uh, you know, when I was in Key Largo, I was a, a, a mate uh, as well, and I had to swab decks. I had to clean fish. I had to uh, to take over the, the uh, captain's duties when he was throwing up overboard. <laughs> Yeah, no, I didn't, I didn't do, I was more of like a liaison between the ports uh, people and the captain okay. to kind of keep them separate. So I did a lot of paperwork and uh, going around and asking people questions that the captain didn't want to go ask and, uh, you know, just <laughs> investigations and stuff like that, that ship, you know, that happens on ships. It's a different world. Oh, I got to know. So. Tell me about this world. This is something different. I've never heard. I mean, I, I've performed on sh- uh, ships before. I've, I've uh, been involved with, with people that, that have done plays and I've DJed on ships for weddings and stuff like that. But, you know, I, I've never had the life to where I was working as staff on a ship. That's got to be some kind of interesting. Uh, you know, you're working as a liaison for the captain. Yeah, mostly it's paperwork. I'm sure it's not glamorous most of the time. But tell me, tell me some stories. What what was the what was the the cool stuff that happened on the ship behind the scenes? Um, oh, behind uh, behind the scenes or in um, front. I mean, I think the coolest couple of things that I had to go through is we had a ship that got attacked by pirates. What? Where? So, when? Um, in the in the southern near the southern Caribbean. Closer, closer to South America, but Central South America area. That still happens. Um, it does still happen. Uh, yeah, it was. It was. But for me, I was so young. I, you know, we had water cannons and stuff, and I just thought it was so much fun. I didn't understand the seriousness of it at the time. I'm just like, we have pirates, whatever. You know. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I've heard of Somalian um, pirates. Uh, you know, I know that's still a thing, at least as, as recent as a, a few years ago. But I, I didn't know that there were still pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, uh, I, I don't think they're like hanging out uh, in main ports or anything. <laughs> we we sailed from California all the way down around South America. So oh, cool. Yeah. So it was I'm pretty sure that's around the time that it happened. But yeah, it's they don't report it as, because it wasn't. I mean, you shoot them with cannons, and then most of the time they go away. They don't take over the ship all the time. And so you say, you say water same, cannons? That that was like a like a fire hose type of thing. Sort of, yeah. That's they had a cool. they had a contraption that you'd put. You know, the when you go to the Empire State Building, those things you look through the binocular things. Yeah. Like, so it was sort of like that, and you just move it around, and the water shoots. You know, wherever. Whatever you aim it at, I guess. So, um, were you knocking cats yeah. off their off the deck, or, or was it just a deterrent? Uh, it's a deterrent because it's, it's a strong. Uh, you know, these pe- these little pirates would come up in little boats. <laughs> it wasn't like a a big ship or anything that they were approaching on. So it was pretty easy to. But that only happened to me once. <laughs> I, was, I was there for several years hey that's a story to tell for years to come it could be turned into a play uh, or a movie i I, I smell i smell a pilot (laughs) yeah me standing there laughing oh my goodness yes yes who's gonna play angela gale Hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Um, the other thing is i went through hurricane katrina in a ship right through the middle of it so that was that was sort of the end of my career after that because I was I couldn't stay on the ships. I was having nightmares and things that how am I going to swim out if the ship topples over kind of situation. So I decided I needed to move on. <laughs> yeah, I mean I've heard that, that you know people go hey I, I I love going on cruises but then you hear that once in a while and yes it always becomes big news is that one ship you know had fires or or there was a hole in the boat or or they got stuck out at sea, you know, and it, 
I know that there's got to be more boats that are or more ships that that actually make their voyages without incident. It's just those those one out of a hundred. I'm just guessing. They get reported. Yeah, I mean it's it's one of those things that's. I mean, things happen out on sea. They don't report it all the time. It's just, it's normal. I mean, I went through several hurricanes, but Katrina was the worst that I had to go through. But I, we, we went, our ship went through five, like, I think I went through five or six hurricanes wow. uh, as far as on the ocean. Well, yeah, so, you say you, you came out of California, but you, you spent most of your time in the Caribbean? Um. Well, I was. I moved to several different ships. So I was in Europe. I sailed around Europe for a while. Wow. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I was in up and down the East Coast. Uh, I was out of California. I was out of Miami. Um, I, I was moving around quite a bit. That's so, cool. Yeah. And then you go on vacation for, you get a two month vacation and they'll fly you wherever you want to go. So I would go wherever I felt like. That's no, that is so, really great. What a way to spend your 20s. And not even your all your yeah. 20s. That was like your early 20s, right? Yeah, it was still, I think I was 19 when I started. Oh, that. my goodness. So, Kids, yeah, that is so, fantastic. I tell people <laughs> in their 20s, do whatever you want. See see the world or, or you know, do every, everything. And it looks like you found a way to work and have, you know, a, a world experience at the same time. Uh, that's cool. I mean, where, what other places did you go and what were the highlights? What were the highlights? Uh, so I went to, I think my favorite place to go was Singapore, uh, just because it was, it was such a beautiful and clean. It's a clean, like you, as soon as you get off the plane, you can smell a different air. It's just clean air. and But they have a lot of laws there that are really strict. Um, and you can't chew gum and things like that. So, I don't think that I could live there, but it was a good experience. Uh, and then um, traveling around Europe was amazing too, because I, you know, America is not that old compared to Europe, so I got to I've go and see castles, and you know, you know I, we went to Germany, and I would go to a beer fest, which is really intense there. Like around um, October. Really curious about the, no, it's all the time. It's, oh. it's kind of a German. <laughs> so they're just drinking German all the thing. time. <laughs> <laughs> and in the area where I was, they were. But that might have been because we were in port, and that was kind of their thing. But um, <laughs> You heard it here first, first folks. Angela Gale <laughs> says they drink in Germany. <laughs> they do. They drink beer. I believe it. Uh, yeah, so I got off the ship and uh, decided I was going to go to college. Oh, okay. But I got back into modeling at the same time, so I was doing that and going to school. Did you say you uh, went in I Orlando, up, UCF, or what? No, I went to Middle Tennessee State University, and then oh, okay. I ended up in Orlando for graduate school. Oh, okay. Where so, did you end up in, in Orlando? You mean the school or the... Yeah, what school? Out, um, I went to Barry University. Barry. Oh, Okay. Yeah, I went. Yeah. I went to Broward, and and I, I was thinking about you know Barry or UCF or or one of those, but but that's cool. Or, or I guess it was USF is in. Uh, no, it's, yeah, U, UCF is uh, there, but I don't I don't know if they have a graduate program. Yeah. But. So what did you want to be when you grew up? When you were thinking about it? Um, I wanted to be a judge. Oh, how so, did that happen? That was a left turn. I, I don't. Yeah, just as a kid playing around in the yard with my brothers and all that stuff, I just, uh, I used to uh, get them into fights so that I could be the mediator <laughs> and sort of <laughs> break up the fight. She caused the <laughs> problem was, yeah. and then solved yeah, the so, problem. Yeah, so people um, people would always say, you're such, you're such a good arguer. And you're so diplomatic. And I never really knew what that meant for myself I but I I I knew that I admired judges at the time. I still do, but I I don't necessarily want to go that direction now. No, but, uh, that, but I did, what an interesting I did turn. Them. What an interesting uh you know experience that you had that studying the law. I mean, how how you say you you started in in Nashville. Uh what what kind of degree did you end up with in 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 Tennessee? In Nashville. 
Um, I got, I have a double bachelor's degree, so um, I got that in international relations, uh, business management, political science, and pre-law. All right, so, she's a smarty pants, everybody. Angela Gale, <laughs> study. I was, not, I wasn't smart at all. <laughs> so, yeah, but you I, work hard. I, I don't know. Why. Yeah, just you know, you just. I don't know how where I've picked it up at, but I, I think I believe in you know if you dream about something, then go and catch it. Go do what you need to do to get that to achieve that. You know, and I I was able to. I was lucky to achieve stuff at a young age. Oh, Angela so, Gale, I believe you I just, put your mind to it. You're going to do whatever you want. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. Where, where do you feel like you got that work ethic from? Uh, parents or or your your brothers? You say you had two brothers. Yeah, I did. Um, I'm. I, I don't know where the. I mean, my mom. My parents are hard workers. Um, I. I told you before. I had to. I, when I was like chopping down trees and doing all that stuff, it wasn't always for fun. So <laughs> there's certain things that you had to get done. No, we got to heat up the house, right? It, 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 let's go. Yeah. Ch- let's go get yeah. that wood chopped down. Were you the oldest? I'm guessing. Right. I'm not the oldest. Oh. No, I'm in the middle. Wow, middle child instigating the older yeah. brother and the younger brother. I like it. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of fun doing that. So, um, so I I said I'm going to finish and get my degree, and my so I got my doctorate, um, and I decided I wanted to go back into music and acting, and that's what I've been doing since. Fantastic. So, well, before you before yeah. you go go on into that, you could brag on your brothers. What are they doing? Um, my older brother, uh, he's just, he has a job. I I mean, I don't want to say where he works, but he's, he's had a job now for, I don't know, 18, 17 years or something. Man's got staying power, Um, work ethic. Yeah. Dig it. Yeah. Um, and then my younger brother, uh, I don't really know exactly what he does. (laughs) (laughs) He's uh, a possibly a secret agent. (laughs) No, no, I know he works. Um, (laughs) You know, he's a painter. Not, uh, he paints stuff and carves wood and does artistic things like that. But that's more of a hobby for yeah. him. So, I mean, you could turn a yeah, hobby so, into a job. That's easy. <laughs> it's not easy. You, it is still work. But you could turn a hobby into a job. And yeah, that's fantastic. He's a, he's a sculptor, yeah. a painter. <laughs> Can we see his work online? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe um, he'll show up on the podcast coming up soon. <laughs> he might. He might. He's not. Um, we don't. We try not to sh- to get on each other's social media and all that stuff. It's not. <laughs> try to stay away from that. So, <laughs> like, um, my, like when my mom added me on Facebook. Ow, mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But thankfully, I don't added, do any. Added, I don't do any crazy stuff on my Facebook. It's mostly me just talking about. Uh, the jobs I'm doing, the the DJ work and such. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for that, sure. yeah. So, <laughs> so go, continue in the life of Angela Gale. I so, what, I'm sorry. What? Continue in the life of Angela Gale. <laughs> so, well, I mean, are, are your parents we're here still, now? Yeah, are are your parents uh, still doing music? Are they still playing in a band at all? They do. They play with the they with the church now. What? So that's great. Yeah, they he plays the trumpet still and the guitar. They go to visit nursing homes and all that every weekend. Um, I I was doing a lot of that for a while. Uh, I was going every week to do charity work and uh, humanitarian stuff and things like that. But with when law school happened, a lot of that it was it was too hard to do all of it. But um, no, I understand. Now we're, now they've, um, we're obviously in a weird place, I guess, because America's shut down or whatever. So they just canceled the nursing home visits and all that. So my parents are upset and, you know, uh, understandably, but yeah, yeah my, still- my regular Friday night gig just got canceled today. Kind of mm-hmm. iffy on that. Just stay off the internet, kids. <laughs> you know, every every two years this happens. Hey, you remember SARS and Ebola and and 
and bird flu. You remember those? You know, it was every two years. <laughs> it gets fixed and we move on. <laughs> yeah, um, I guess it depends on each person's situation. Some people need to worry more and some people don't. Uh, yeah. But we're definitely in a situation where we have to, everybody has to be a team. Vigilant. Because Vigilant. And you don't together. Wanna, you don't want to be responsible. Yeah, because you don't want to be responsible thinking that somebody died because you wanted to go, you know. Oh, for sure. Hang out at hang out at the bar or whatever, you know. So oh, erring on the side of caution, I, I could see that. And you know, yes. Right. And for those of you that are listening, uh, ten years in the future, uh, in uh, twenty twenty, <laughs> uh, March of twenty twenty, there was the coronavirus, the COVID nineteen started at the end of two thousand nineteen in China. So there, there, we're in a time capsule. <laughs> yeah, you can go, you can Google it. That's <laughs> it'll, right. It'll explain everything. <laughs> yeah, I, I was doing a news uh, podcast, and and now it's called the the novel COVID nineteen coronavirus. You have to say all that. <laughs> the, the, you say that in one. Okay, the you have novel, to say that, or you're telling the novel COVID nineteen coronavirus. It has to be said all. Uh, all those syllables have to be said. <laughs> Why? I, that's just what they're calling it. You know, because if you call it just COVID-19, people go, well, what was that? What, is that something new? Oh, no, it's the coronavirus. Oh, okay. Is that something? New? Yeah, it's novel. Novel? I don't even know what that means. But that's what they're making us say. Oh, gosh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, then. Well, <laughs> I don't Okay, I'm going to just keep my mouth shut on that one. No, you don't have to. <laughs> you don't have to. Tell me everything. This is your podcast. I want to know your thoughts, what your viewpoints on every little thing. Um, I don't I don't really have a, a viewpoint on it other than I know what I have to do for you know, to keep myself safe and for my my own life. So, I'm doing that and I'm trying not to hurt anybody else in my life in the process. And that's there all go. there is. We just have to let it pass. <laughs> I, w- I was washing Remember? hands before it was trending. <laughs> true. That's a true story. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Angela Gale, I'm having fun with you. I'm having a whole lot of fun with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> and we're, you know, we're popping. I mean, we're, we're popping through your life, how you became who you are today. And I'm not even exactly sure what that is. You have three different tent poles: the the musician, the actress, and the model. And, and yeah. as we, as we come into, to the now, uh, you know, you, you, you got off the ship, you studied law. How, how far did you go in that? Did you, you didn't finish the law? I got my, I received my doctorate. So yeah. You did finish the I law. Did. What? I, <laughs> I did. Yeah. So it's Dr. Um, Angela Gale in what? Well, in, in law. In law. And what can you do with that? Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of, um, you can do HR positions and, um, a lot of like legal advising as, you know, if you go work for a corporation or something, you can advise them on stuff. Well, you the better question is and, what have you done with it, Angela Gale? What have I done with law? Um, I were, I, I did most of the work that I did was during school uh, yeah. and a little bit after, but I've worked in the air, like areas of immigration, law, criminal, um, a little bit of everything, business. And um, you were able to then, intern with somebody? I was. And then in Tennessee, uh, they have a, I don't know if they have it now, but then they had a, it was called a supervised attorney. So if you had graduated and you were planning on becoming an attorney, you could uh, practice under the supervision of somebody else. So I was taking cases and going to court and doing all that for a little while, probably, hey. oh, maybe a year or so. Angela Gale, I so. had no idea. <laughs> she, yeah. She's some kind of a lawyer. <laughs> now, do you do you want to go ahead and take the bar, or, or do you, you plan to do that, or is that something in the future that That's, you can do? It's something I can always do, and, and it's the reason that I stuck with school as long as I did, because you always want to have a plan B, right? So, um. Yeah, I can go and take the bar anytime I want. I just, um, I, I'm enjoying my music and all the other stuff I'm doing. Yeah, I'm enjoying of, it too. <laughs> so yeah. what, are you, <laughs> yeah. what are you focused on? I mean, uh, in the music, 
you say you started writing songs. Did you get anything produced and, and where can we listen to it? Well, I have the songs that are already online with, I'm, I'm sure you've heard those already. Yes. Um, and then I'm going to try and release a single in the next month. And then I've written about probably seven or eight songs on top of that. And there's a couple of uh, really big covers that I'm, I want to do. So I'm, uh, one of the covers, which I won't bring up now, we can we can have another podcast for that. But it's um, an artist, an older. He's already de- dead, but <laughs> he's from Tennessee. Yeah. So if that gives you any hints, and so I want to do, um, I'm basically rewriting his song and covering that. But I'm, I, you know, you have to transpose it from guitar to piano or whatever. Um, and change the keys because I don't sing in the same key and all that. So that takes some work. Well, the uh, two songs that I've heard were uh, Love Yourself and Have You Told Her. Yeah. And those are the two that you had produced? Those are the two. I wrote those, yeah. And, and, and when did those come around? Uh, I think the first one was released in September, so not, not too long ago. Wow. And then the other one, November was... And then Love Yourself came out in November. So they moved. Um, they're doing really well. They've moved quickly. Um, I haven't received a lot of. I've, I've received just good news and positivity yeah. from people. Um, I don't know if I am have lost myself out. Because you always have um, trolls. Is that what they're called? I guess. I guess. But, you know, but how does it feel putting something out into the universe? You know, and, and, and just wow and seeing it blossom and and hearing the response i mean i try to stay away from the negative comments i i get that from time to time but you know it's it's kind of tough to to uh, navigate the social media people always want to knock you down because and the and the people that knock you down are the ones that are not doing as good as you <laughs> i find that yeah and my parents taught me at a really young age too and even before social media if somebody's if somebody hates you, then you're doing something right. That is correct. So, <laughs> you yeah. are wise, so Angela just, Gale. You are wise. <laughs> it doesn't bother me. Uh, it doesn't bother me too much. I do still have the uh, the occasional stalker types <laughs> that still come around. So that's a little strange to deal with, but it's not anything abnormal. Not for my life, anyways. <laughs> Okay, yeah. you you've been through a yeah. few things, Angela Gale. <laughs> yeah, you can say that. So <laughs> they, you know, people people enjoy seeing pictures and all that, and that's fine. Um, it's just one of those things you sign up for, I guess. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So you just got another subscriber to your Angela Gale YouTube page. You've got a couple of videos out there, or at least your songs are out there yeah, and you have uh-huh. more to come. Now you say you started writing songs. When did that start? Uh, I've always written stuff, poems and things like that. Uh, and so I've written songs too, but I just started, I went through a, a hard time, which you can hear. If you listen to have you told her, mm. uh, you, you would know you'll, you, you kind of know what I went through. <laughs> And the way I got through it was writing about it. And it was, it was at the time kind of a, this is how I'm feeling sort of thing. And then it turned into, well, let's, this will be a great song. And then it just sort of shot up from there. And uh, people that have seen what I, the things that I've written, they want, they want me to write more and all of that. But yeah, so I, I try to write based off of my life experiences and, uh, yeah, through pain and tragedy. Come, <laughs> yeah, that, through pain and tragedy comes creativity, and that's what you do. And that's what a creative person does: is turn their pain, turn their life experience, whether it be pain or pleasure, into into a song. And, and you know, you say you've written poetry and you've written songs. What's the difference between writing a song and written and writing poetry? Uh, do you think of a melody as you're writing the words? Is that the difference, or is there something else to it? Um, I think there's a certain, uh, not rhythm, but there's a certain formula for if you're writing a song versus poetry, you can, 
use as many words as you want and all of that. You, um, with songs, you have to, you know, it has to be a certain amount of eight counts and then a, then a four count. And then, a you know, it's just, it's just a different formula, it, but they're both pretty similar as far as getting your emotions out. And, um, as far as it being cathartic, yeah. is that the right word? Yeah, that is, cathartic. that is that where you could just yeah. get it out to the world, scream your right. pain out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and but uh you know do you do you still have the poems do you have you published those or or do you plan to um i'm thinking about it there's there's the things being there's ideas being thrown around about it my grandmother was a famous author so uh she she has all kinds of stuff that she's handwritten all over the house and things like that so Fantastic. but she she's been gone since the mid 90s oh. so well, look for yeah, Angela Gale's to... book of poems coming soon. I can feel it. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> I mean, maybe. Do, you, do you have a blog or anything that, uh, that people can follow uh, in, in that respect where you, you write your musings out or, or is this something? No, I don't. I prefer to put it in a song and put it out as for in a music form. And I don't, I honestly, I don't have time to, I barely have time to be on social media, much yeah. less um, doing a blog. But, there are people that have some good blogs out there and they're doing well. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so we don't need Angela Gale's blog. Okay. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just, you, you'll continue making the, making the music videos and is, is the modeling done or are you, you finished with that part of your, of your life or are you still open to that? Um, I would think that in the, out of the three of them, it's probably the third one, but I still do photo shoots and, um. Yeah, I, I still I still model, but it's not as serious as it was, as it was when I started. Cool. Well, which okay. catalogs can yeah. we can we find you in? What what print? <laughs> I'm sure it's Are all out there. Are you asking a question that you already know the answer to? Nope. <laughs> You're not. No. Okay. I, hey, you'll find, <laughs> and, and the people that, that listen to this podcast know that I do very little research. I I want to have a genuine con- conversation with Angela Gale. And find out more. This is, you know, it's kind of like a, a an, an interview or, I, you know, kind of a conversation, really. As I tell, I'll tell you a little it bit is, about yeah. about myself. If some something you say kind of triggers uh, an idea, oh yeah, I remember when I did that. But uh, yeah, uh, we're learning more about you. Where where can we find your your print? Um, I I I'm not allowed to to say the names of the prints. Oh, okay. right now because of my. The contracts that I'm under. Oh, cool. That's why okay. I ask because a lot of people will Google it and they'll see um, what things I've been in, and then they they want to do an interview and they'll ask me about it when they already know. Oh, but I know I nothing. Believe you that you I, I know yeah. your name. <laughs> I, I know it's Angela Gale, singer. <laughs> yeah. So I've I've been advised to just not speak those names because, uh, you know, just for I don't know. I just I just listen to the, when people tell me to do stuff. So <laughs> we'll leave that in the past. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you're focusing, and then the acting. Uh, you know, I, I noticed that I did find your your IMDb, and you got a couple credits out there. She's a genuine actress with credits. Uh, did you did, did you, <laughs> you you happen to get sagged or? I mean, that's the one thing about being an artist is is you don't get a good health benefits. Uh, you know, you have to do you have to have some kind of a Joe job so you can get some benefits unless you're making, you know, buco bucks where you can pay your own health care. But, uh, yeah, you yeah mean, I mean, I'm, I'm doing fine with private insurance. I don't, I don't know how other people are, but I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> I don't well, know how good. to deal with it. <laughs> so, um, what was the question you said? No, that, you, I mean, you're on the IMDB. I was wondering if you got into the, oh, yeah, yeah. into the SAG or, or whatever the the thing is, I, I've heard there's a, a Screen um, Actors Guild. Yeah, uh, uh, I'm I'm non-union right now because once you're unionized, the, the rules change and all that. You have to move. It's difficult to get jobs around Nashville. Gotcha. Um, as a SAG, yeah. So, well, um, I, IMDb, I'm, you do have a, a credit, uh, Gabriella. It's a short. It's a fantasy short. Is from what I can see. It is. Tell me about yeah. it. Tell me how you got involved in that. 
Uh, I just, I went on auditions and um, Gabriella is a story about Cinderella, but Cinderella is, um, she's actually the evil one and the sisters are the kind ones, the, the evil sisters. So they switched roles. What a twist. And I like the story of yeah, Cinderella. So, I'll watch any incarnation of Cinderella. The classics never die. Uh, you know, and, and I consider yeah, Cinderella yeah. a classic. And Gabriella, where can I find this? Um, Bob, you would have, I, I don't know. You'd have to speak to the director Okay, on that one. I'll, I'll I, just, be, uh, I just go show up and do my work. And <laughs> <laughs> so where was this um, shot at? It was shot in Philadelphia, actually. How did you get there? I mean, where, where was the, uh, where was the audition? The audition was online. So oh, okay. we do a, a video Skype or whatever. And well, tell me about uh, that process. You, the, uh, you, you submit for, or your agent submits for casting and then uh, you get a call back. They send you uh, a scene to read. Uh, and if you get far enough, then they'll want to, they'll want to do an online thing uh, and see your face and see if you can. One of my things is that I do have a Southern accent, but I can change it. I've taken dialect lessons, so I can become more neutral and all that if I need to, um, or British or whatever. So they ask you to do that, and you move on. Angela <laughs> Gale, as I said, I don't, I, I, I never do a lot of research on these things. I just found you as the title character. You're not only in this this movie in this short; you're the star of the short. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, how did that make you feel being the star of a, of, of a feature movie or a, of a little, of a short, of a, of, of anything, of it a was, project? You know, it was, um, it was really exciting, but it was a lot of pressure too, because, uh, it, it was one of, it, you're put in a position where you're kind of, everybody's looking at you to, yeah. to run the show and, so it, there was a lot of pressure there, but it was a lot of fun. And it's, I, if I could do it for the rest of my life, I would. No, I, I've heard so. on the acting side, uh, number one on the call sheet, you set the pace, you set the tone, whatever your attitude is, uh, however you act on scene, you know, either in the, you know, in the, the play and even off the stage or off the play or off the, uh, the camera, uh, you're setting yeah. the tone for the whole production. And, and I mean, did right. you, con you you feel like you conducted yourself in a proper manner? And, and oh, I want the green M and M's only. <laughs> you know, or, or, oh no, I'm not that type of girl. <laughs> you feel like you got along um, with everybody in the in the cast? Yeah, for sure, for did, sure. Did I, you make um, any friendships here? I I did, and the I made a friend. Yeah, of course. So I, you make friends, and it's not about. Uh, you should just always be kind to wherever you, I mean, in any situation, there's no reason to be, to show up and be a diva. Now, I mean, demanding M&Ms and stuff, I don't, I don't, I don't really want in a position to demand M&Ms from anybody <laughs> on, on this one, but. <laughs> no, I mean, um, you know, certain, certain people get a writer, you know, to make sure that, that, that things go that are, you know, the, to make sure that their, their demands are met, you know, that, that they, they're going to be treated a certain way. But I, I can see that this is a, an independent film and everybody's got to pull their own weight uh, most of the time on an ind independent film. You say, you're, you know, it's not a uh, screen actors guild. It's not a union gig. It was something that was done. Uh, you know, I'm guessing for, for love. I mean, hopefully, I mean, where did, where did this film get submitted? Do you, do you know, did it go to any of the, of the, uh, like the the film festivals anywhere? I think they uh, they're doing that. You they're in the process. Oh, it's happening doing, now. Yeah, they're it's currently moving around. Apparently, is what I've been told. So, and then I've moved on to some other things that I'm doing. So I don't have time to keep up with it. And I'm sure they'll call me at some point and say, "Well, you need to come here and do a red carpet or or whatever." But I'm not. That is a, I, I like the process yeah. more than anything. So I mean, well, um, when you shot your scenes, were you able to see the dailies? I mean, these are these are little, little lingos that I've been picking up 
over the years uh, listening to other podcasts? Did you you know watch the dailies? Were you involved in the in the uh, the movie making itself? Did you learn any any other jobs while you were there on set? Yeah, I mean, you see, um, you get to sometimes watch playback and things like that to see uh, where you need to be positioned in front of the camera. And um, I think the main thing that I, that I learned that I wanted to, I want to take with me is doing action things. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm really into, you know, I want to do like. Uh, fighting and riding motorcycles and i want to do all that kind of stuff so Uh you heard it here first angela gale (laughs) action superhero (laughs) Uh, marvel dc call her now (laughs) no no well yeah okay maybe (laughs) (laughs) you're not gonna say no you're not gonna say no i was thinking more along a different line but maybe marvel's good too yeah angela gale mission impossible Angela Gale. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I might be too tall for that gig, but. Uh-huh. Um, well, I, yeah, I guess, uh, was it Tom Cruise is probably five foot what? <laughs> I don't know. He's, uh, I don't know, but he, well, he works with a few tall people. Yeah, yeah. I think most of the people, uh, Cameron Diaz and Nicole Kidman, they're all tall. Yeah. So. Five, hey, five ten. that's respectable. I don't think that's too, too tall for anything. That's, that's uh, the perfect height <laughs> for you. Angela Gale. <laughs> For me, yes. <laughs> I guess. Depending on what day you ask me. So. <laughs> you can reach the top. You stand, a stretch up, and you can reach the top shelf. Yeah. <laughs> well, all right. I'm, yeah, and, and yes, I'm reading your, your bio on IMDb and kind of perusing over it. And yes, I know how old you are. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it says it. You can Google it, but I don't. I don't have to announce it, right? You do not have to <laughs> announce it. Absolutely not. No, fantastic. Yeah. I mean, yeah. While I was uh, just, well, I, I graduated '86, and uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, so sweet. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Angela Gale. Yeah, All right. a lot so, going on before I was born. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, um, okay. So you're acting, and I see you do have a, another credit that's coming up. Uh, what is it? The, political affair is that something that's happening right now no that was that uh, was a few years ago okay and that one uh involved uh i was a spy i guess or a computer hacker cool so it wasn't a big it was a smaller gig i guess smaller smaller job hey one of my favorite angelina jolie movies was her in in the hackers movie fantastic (laughs) yeah (laughs) <laughs> great movie i actually watched her the other the other a couple nights ago in a movie so i i watched the movie twice because i i've been studying people's facial expressions and stuff for yeah. for some things that i'm preparing for now so it's work baby doing, it's work that's how you perfect it your, is. your craft <laughs> it is yeah for sure so you're and currently going um, out for for other gigs for other uh acting gigs uh, yeah, I am. Yeah, I have uh, some things that I'm shooting. Well, I was supposed to shoot this weekend, and that got delayed, so they moved that to April. Um, and then I've got some photo shoots coming up, and I'm writing my music. And I'm lucky because I I have stuff to do, uh, and I you know I can play the piano and the guitar and all of that, so I don't I don't get bored as easily as um, other people, I guess. Yeah, but at you, least that's what they're saying on the news. You're you're not yeah. actively working in, in the law stuff. Are you doing gigs uh, at different little clubs or or any bars do, using your piano uh, and singing talents and your guitar talents? Um, no, I don't. You know, there's a lot of. It used to work that way in Nashville that you could go downtown and somebody would discover you, but it kind of has gotten. There's a lot of musicians down there now, so there's a there's a lot more competition than just like one person showing up and the whole street watching them, you know. So so I don't do gigs downtown, but I will go. Uh, like I think we're planning to go to Europe, London, the UK. Who's we? This summer. Well, my team, uh, my the, manager, and my publicist, and all that. Uh, so with the jazz band um, or or something else? No, no, no. As a solo artist. Oh, how cool uh, is that? 
Yeah, my, one of my yeah. buddies, Luke Williams, just moved from Arkansas, and he made his way to Nashville, and he's trying to make it his thing. I mean, he hangs out on Broadway Street, and it seems like he's gigging quite regularly. Uh, that's something you can yeah, do. Yeah, of course. You know, if you it is something you can do for extra money, yeah, for sure. Um, I don't. I'm. I'm not in a position that I. Um, I don't want to say it like that. Uh, yeah, I'm better than that. No, yeah. I said it. I said it. No, no, no. You are better I, than that, I, Angela that Gale. No, <laughs> no, I think he's just the words in my mouth. Um, I, I don't need, I can go out and find a job if I need one. Absolutely. Absolutely. Way. I mean, okay. you definitely have your, you have your law to, to, uh, to fall back on and other skills, of course, you know, and, but yeah. uh, when, uh, so yeah, I mean, so you're focusing on, well, you have the, the the two songs out there. You you play those, and and you're writing more songs now, and you're you're about to uh, to release another single coming up real soon. I mean, who's your uh, who's your producing team if if you don't if uh, if you don't yeah, if you want to give um, them a shout out? Yeah, so Chris Love Studios is who I work with, and he's um he's an award winning Nashville based producer. He he judges a lot of songwriting competitions, things like that. Um, he and I work together really well. Uh, I can go in and say, I can say I'm getting inspiration from three different songs and he'll find a way to get a sound out of all three of the songs and put them into one. You know, he's really talented in that. Um, so I just continued working with him and I do have other producers that want to work with me. It's, it's difficult because I want to be able to write my own stuff and change notes and things like that. But there's some producers that they're not, they want to be involved in that too. So, you know, that's, to, that, that's something that an artist has to, sometimes they have to put their own, their own selves out, you know, to, 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 to make a hit, you know, because a good producer such as Chris Love and I'm looking, you know, he has, he's playing his guitar and a nice bearded gentleman, uh, you know, somebody yeah. such as him, he, <laughs> he's, he's not, He's very unbiased, and he his discerning ear. He probably knows how to make a song that's going to sell. You know, you'll come to him with an idea, and you'll say, "This is the way I want it. This is perfect." And, and it, it it might be perfect to you, but it's hard to to let that ego go. You know, sometimes I, I I'm just I'm just guessing. I've never written a song, but is that something you that mean you, it's hard you, for the for the, the songwriter? songwriter? Yeah. To kind of just, is that a struggle that you've had where, where you, oh, um, don't change that note? As, no, no, no. I think, um, well, he and I know each other. We've known each other for a little while now. So yeah. we don't really have an ego. Um, yeah. And, you know, if you listen to Have You Told Her, yes. I went in and I said, the kind of sound that I want, it comes from um, Charlie Daniels, the devil went down to Georgia. Yeah. And it, that that's that was my inspiration for the sound, and he turned it into what it was. Um, so as far as you know, I might change a key or something, uh, but I trust him to. He knows what people are listening to and all that kind of stuff, and I trust him in that. So we don't really have egos with each other, <laughs> and he doesn't want to write the words. So no, I I, I love the blurb that he he wrote for you. That's in your bio on your Ang- Angela Gale official dot com page. Angela has yeah. a Angela has a great passion for music and storytelling. Her songs cut deep and run wild with raw emotion. It's a joy and privilege to work with her. I mean that's high praise. I, yeah. yeah. I, you know, I know you've read those words before, but to hear them again, you even just gave another awe and that's that shows you have a, a good relationship with your producer and that's that's important. It it's it takes a team. Uh, to to it make does. make things happen, and it sounds like you work well with others, Angela Gale, and uh, yeah, I try to. Oh, yeah. you you're doing great, and I I appreciate you being <laughs> on the podcast with me and telling telling the people a little idea of who you are as up as it is up to now. And I know as things progress, I I hope that you will come back on. You've already alluded to, uh, hey, that'll be another podcast when other things happen when things get laid laid down as time progresses uh, you're focusing on the music career and the acting and uh and and the the law it's still back there 
it's still back there, if, you know. <laughs> but yeah, um, that's something that can never be taken away from me. That is excellent. So. That is excellent. You you know you. It sounds like like I said before, you you put your mind to it and you go all the way, and that's beautiful. That that that's uh that that's a certain type of person, Angela Gale, and I'm I'm very glad to know you, and that's uh, a wonderful thing, and and I look forward to to hearing more from you. And I guess as we well, wind you. this thing down, I, I mean, I've taken an hour of your time away. Um, you know, I give the people an idea of, of how to get a hold of you socially and, and, uh, and, you know, how, how do you want people to connect with you and, and, and that, and the like. Are you, saying, are you asking me or are you telling? I'm asting, you I'm you asking you, I'm asking you to oh. <laughs> tell the people how to get a hold of you, Angela so, Gale. Yeah. So all of my social media is going to be Angela Gale 01. Um, and so that's at Twitter, at Instagram. You can also visit my website at AngelaGaleOfficial.com. And uh, yeah, if you want to get a hold of me, it's it's not it's not too difficult. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what what kind yeah. of uh, opportunities are you in the in the market for as it is right now? If anybody's listening, that could give you give you some uh, uh, some jobs. Um. It's less of a job and more of a a dream that I'm chasing right now. But uh, what can I say? Uh, I think there's certain people and certain uh, that do certain, like they do music or they do acting or whatever that I want to work with uh, and surround myself with based on their abilities and their talents. So I don't know if that's appealing to anyone <laughs> out there but in the public but that's just sort of what where i'm at right now There's certain certain types of roles that i want to play and um people that i look up to and all that so i hope that i can run into some of them one day i think i will <laughs> I, I hope i will i know an actor here in, in arkansas uh his twitter he he uses it primarily to to tag the people that he'd like to work with and, you know, he, he'll put a picture of him out there and says, I would love to work with you. I would love to work with you. I would love to work uh, with how, you. How's that working out? I don't know. I haven't talked to him in a while. I had him on the podcast last year. I need to catch back up with him and, and find out how it's going. I know he's done uh, a few uh, local things. Uh, he's done some stage work here in Arkansas. There's a pretty big uh, theater community in, in Arkansas, in, in the central Arkansas area at least. And, and, uh, there's some movies actually that get made here in Arkansas. And he's, he's been, uh, a privilege to, to be, you know, some of the background and, and be involved in some of the, some of those productions. So, you know, if you want to be a working actor, actress, you go out there and you, you put yourself out there and that's pretty much what you've been doing, Angela, you go anywhere, Philadelphia, <laughs> you know, you'll, you'll, yeah, wherever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm game for anything. So, <laughs> I, I don't know that I would, that I would use the same strategy as him. <laughs> as, as um, Do you I think, think it's, it's a little I'm stalkery? So <laughs> well, no, I'm just so shy. I just know that if I meet those people or run into those people, then I will tell them myself what you know what they've meant to me. I don't, I don't, I don't know about putting it out there. It's, it seems sort of personal. I guess. Well, yeah, I guess uh, you got to make those opportunities happen. Yeah. Go go to those uh big Hollywood uh parties and schmooze. Is that something you you're oh, wanting to do? I'm not, no, <laughs> I not already really knew the answer to that one. You're not a schmoozer. <laughs> you, if no, if it I'm comes not, naturally, a, I mean, where, I I wouldn't even know where to go to, <laughs> to, to schmooze. <laughs> I I California uh, is the place you ought to be. I, I guess there's a, yeah. a lot of productions everywhere, really. There's productions in in Atlanta now. I think that's a a big production hub for television. <laughs> it I, is, yeah. I think they're getting yeah. a lot of tax breaks. So uh, I know a guy who moved from uh, Detroit, and the way he got his acting career underway, he went to Atlanta, and now he's doing. He was a zombie in in one of those shows, you know. So <laughs> he's yeah. he's moving that's along. Good. Yeah, yeah. If you want to be an actor, you act. Do it. And you, you, you know, you, yep. you've taken the lessons, you, you, you got the talents already, I mean, under your belt, you've done the work and you continue doing the work. You, 
you keep per- perfecting your craft and and uh yeah i know i sound like uh, no no your, thank you perfecting <laughs> your craft that. i know i'm buttering your bread uh, to no end but uh, no. <laughs> as we as we wind this thing down i'll put <laughs> i'll make sure i put all your social links and and your web page into the show notes so people know how to get a hold of you but usually i finish these okay. things off you know i ended up with uh, you giving the last words for the people uh, it could be some words of wisdom to live by or something that just pops into your head at this particular moment in time uh, angela gale last words for the people um i guess I, I just watched a movie and that I was inspired by. And um, so based on that movie, I guess I would say that you only get one life. So, you know, try to do what you want to do as much as possible and, and be happy because you only get one chance at it. So that's what I have for today. But it might be different next time you ask me. <laughs> Well, there you have it, party people. Angela Gale. I knew it was going to be good. I didn't know it was going to be that good. That girl has a story. You know, I'm looking at her bio. Okay, yes, yeah, she has the bio on her Angela Gale uh, official.com. Let me make sure that's, that's right. Yeah, Angela Gale official.com. There's a bio there. But, uh, you know, I kind of skimmed through it where, you know, she talks about she was born in Nashville. She grew up in the country and all that stuff. And I didn't know she was on a boat. I didn't see anything about being on a boat and attacked by pirates. Yes, she said it was only one time. But my goodness, that's one time more than I have. I've never been attacked by pirates on the seven seas in the Caribbean. (laughs) She was attacked by pirates. And then uh, the the last straw, of course, was Hurricane Katrina. Yeah, okay. I I wouldn't want to be on a uh, trapped on a ship. And uh, <laughs> and have a hurricane blow by. So, uh, yeah, I'm glad she's back on dry land and making music out there with Chris Love and his Nashville, uh, his Nashville store, Chris Love Productions. So, uh, yes, Angela Gale, I ex- expect nothing but great things. And I'll be following you. Uh, I listen to your your two songs that you have out there. And I'm looking forward to the next uh, however many songs that come out of your your brain, your creativeness, and your movies. I'm looking forward. I need to find where, where Gabriella is. I want to find that twist on Cinderella, uh, you know, where Cinderella's the bad girl and the, the wicked stepsisters are the nice stepsisters. You know, when I saw Gabriella, I was like, oh, okay. She's got a little little bio. She's got a little, a little credit on her IMDb. And I went, bam, she's the lead. <laughs> yes, I, I, I guess that, that does have a, a lot of connotation to it. A lot of demand and stress and and responsibility on making sure that the production and goes smoothly because yes, I know it's about the the writer and the director and the producers and such, but number one on the call sheet sets the tone uh, of the people in the show. So uh, and she's a hard worker. The law, she could be your lawyer sometime in the future. <laughs> it's possible, uh, Angela Gale. You could do anything you want. Thank you so much for being on the program, What Makes You Famous. If you'd like to tell your story, this time I'm talking to you. Yes, you, my loyal listener. If you'd like to tell your story, I encourage you to give me a call at 501-470-6386 or email info at RadioWhat.com. That's it for this edition of What Makes You Famous. It's Keys Dan, RadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com. Peace. I'm out of here. If you like what you hear, follow What Makes You Famous social media. Use the hashtag What Makes You Famous. Follow on Facebook at What Makes You Famous. Follow on Instagram at What Makes You Famous. Follow on Twitter at Makes Famous. And follow on YouTube at Keys Dan. Leave What Makes You Famous podcast a review and subscribe. Listen to What Makes You Famous podcast on Podbean, iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, and Spotify, and almost anywhere you find podcasts. Tell your story on my podcast, What Makes You Famous. Call 501-470-6386 and leave a message to set up a time. You can support What Makes You Famous using the PayPal link, paypal.me forward slash keys dan email info at radio what makes you famous podcast 
is a production of Keys Dan Enterprises Incorporated at keysdan.com. Thank you for listening. Radio What? The music you want with some great, great quotes. We're all in the gutter, but some of us are looking at the stars. Anonymous. The music you want. Radio What? Dot com. Hey guys, this is Shelly G. She said, what? Well, you are going to have to listen to the countdown to hear what I say. And make sure to keep listening to Radio What for more information and trivia. She said, what? What?